Hey all, hope you all are doing good. So today we are going to understand what is CSRF, what is the importance of it, how is it made and finally a lab. So we are going to have the conceptual knowledge, finally we will end with this uh, practical knowledge. So if you have seen previous video, in one video we have used something called Burp Suit Collaborator. So if you have not, we are going to use it today and we are going to understand what is it meant for. But in one liner I can say it is meant for a real time. Uh, environment creation okay now what is csrf so csf csrf is like i can say if you are aware about session token so what session tokens does it basically uh, when we like i am logging on to some gmail say whenever i open a gmail close a gmail how like open some mail close another mail so basically i am contacting with server right and it it is able to identify that who is the person requesting for something right it is based on some tokens so we have session tokens we have csrf tokens now we in this context in the like in this videos we are going to con concentrate only on the csrf so csrf is a unique token okay it is basically uh, created by the server when on the first call okay and it is like uniquely identify each of the end user okay now it is like how is it made so we have something called pseudo random number generator okay so we have that number and whenever the server creates this token right it will have a timestamp so that timestamp this pseudo random number generator and a static token so these three things together make something called as csrf token so suppose if i'm a bad person okay so my only intention will be like to steal your csrf so once if i have your csrf right i can make any calls on behalf of you so it means i'm basically impersonating you so if you didn't get anything so far it's fine let me tell you this thing if you if suppose uh, I am logged in as a person a okay so I'll have my own CSRF token but somehow I'm able to get the token CSRF token of person B okay so this time whenever I'm doing the request in my request I'll have a CSRF token which is meant for me that is person A but I'll replace intercept that request I'll replace that with the CSRF token of person B so whatever request that I'm making right uh, the server will identify that as person B so what is the use of it so basically when I'm trying to request on your behalf I can do anything like change my mail or something like that okay um, for sure like nowadays we have OTP or two-factor authentication if those things are not um, I can say are not provided for any service I can like manipulate your service right if suppose your mail ID a chain service is there okay you can change your mail service for which there is no two-factor authentication or OTP or any such thing so basically I can have your CSRF token and I can request to change the email from your to my which I have access to okay so this is just an example again um, the whole video is only for the educational purposes so don't use it for unethical purpose and yeah that was all about the conceptual knowledge but uh, yeah now coming to the lab so here if you can see all about CSRF token we have something called okay so you can see these kind of things CSRF token its value so this we are going to see in the lab no worries now then we have the pseudo random number generator so this the complete description is provided I'll have this link in the description now let's move on to our lab okay so this is our lab now what they are uh, asking is to solve the lab perform a dangling markup so what is dangling markup so if we, are, if we are no we at this point of time we know what is cross-site scripting but sometimes directly the cross-site scripting doesn't work like in previously we have closed some existing tag and then we have opened a new tag by providing the content only as an input text so let me open this and you can see here okay so this is our general I can say an HTML input line okay so this is my manipulative tag so here basically I'm closing the existing one and then I'm opening the new one so this was just an example so that's what dangling markup means so basically whatever the existing uh, the uh, tags are there i will be closing that i'll be opening opening my own uh, some new tag so that's what dangling markup means okay so this is clear i guess so they are asking us to perform a dangling markup attack to steal csrf token okay because we know what is CRS, csrf token and what all things we can do so as per this lab we have to steal the csrf token first and then we have to change the email address of some other person so i'll be i will be logging with this username and password but i will change someone else's account's email which i have access to okay so first thing first let's get the csrf token first so what we need to do is first we need to log in with this username 
Oh, access the lab. I hope conceptual uh, wise is uh, everything clear so far. Even if it is not, fine, you'll get it in the lab. Okay, now I'll be logging in. My username and this is the password. Login. So here I can say I'm logged in and I have some service called change email. Okay, so let me open my burp suit first. Now I'll simply mention some or the other name. Okay, so this is some random mail which I'm going to send as a request because overall finally I have to change it to some other mail which lab has asked me to do. Okay, so I'll intercept is on. I am my proxy is configured to point to burp suit. Now we are all good. Now update email. So you can see in this uh, I have an email parameter and I have a CSRF token. So this CSRF token is identifying this person, this Vayner person. Okay, now I'm going to send it to my intruder uh, repeater okay i don't want anything else here so intercept is off now uh, let me open yeah this home is there right i have to go to exploit server so if you have seen the previous videos where we have used the uh, burp suit collaborator so we have a script okay the explanation I'll, and all i have given previously but now i am going to say what is it the script is meant for so uh, basically what the script does is whenever some user so okay yeah this is the exploit server here we are going to paste the script so that script is like whenever a user visits the page right so on that page the user is going to request something which we are going to uh, redirect to our collaborator client okay so here the uh, i can say basically uh, the uh, any other user who is going to visit that website right he is going to make a post request to a a particular endpoint where I am listening to I am as a bad person I am listening to uh, other people's request so that other people's request will contain what CSRF token just like uh, I have shown you just now right so just like the request that we have created we have CSRF token other people will also be having so I'll wait for other people's to visit the page and then this script is going to execute as soon as some other people come and their their request i'm going to have on some endpoint at which i am listening to okay so that is nothing but our collaborator client so first let me add the script so here we go and i can remove all this and paste my so here uh, first thing first uh, what i need to do is this email value is anyhow they are going to take care like whoever the uh, person is their mail id is going to come okay and next here your collaborator id so this is what i need to get it from burp so i'm going to click on burp then collaborator client and uh, let me yeah now it's it's visible i guess copy to clipboard so here the copy to clipboard is going to give me an endpoint so i'm going to remove this from uh, your collaborator client id till dot net i'm going to paste this okay so you can see now this script is basically who, whichever user is going to visit this his um, this script is going to make a request on behalf of that users to this endpoint this collaborator client dot net okay so i have to store this first and then i have to deliver exploit to victim so as soon as i click deliver exploit to victim this is like made live on the web page okay now i'll wait for some people to visit here and there on that page so once they are visiting the request will be coming to this endpoint to this uh, collaborator client and i'll click on poll now so i'll wait for some more seconds so that some people come not the actual people it's like a virtual people who are visiting those people generated by the collaborator client and then we are going to click on poll now after some time so that we'll see some request here which will contain the csrf token so i'll uh, pause for a minute and then i'll click on poll now to see whether people visited or not here my bad yeah so in this script i have also i also need to provide lab id because see location is the page on which we are going to deploy this right and the page is nothing but this page where we are we can comment and do all of things so this is my i can say uh, the lab id some people used to copy this id the one that is there on the exploit server so don't do that it will not work so you have to go to the lab and you have to copy this id that is provided here okay and then I have to click this your lab ID instead of that I need to paste my lab ID 
I can use the same. Uh, let me copy it again. Now this time I will get a different endpoint, but just to be on safe side, I created one more. Okay. So here I am going to instead of this, I am going to create this new endpoint. So on this endpoint, now the request are going to hit. Okay. Store. And next is deliver exploit to victim. So I need to wait for 30 seconds or 60 seconds like that so that people can visit the page and I can see the request on this collaborator client. So after 10 seconds, let, let's wait for 10 seconds and I'll click on poll now. Okay, so it came quickly fine because this is just a virtual environment. So uh, if I open this HTTP request, right, uh, this DNS, uh, we don't need it because this is like not needed as of now out of scope as well. So this is HTTP is what we have to search and in the request to collaborator, I can see this is the request made by the user to this collaborator client. Okay, now I'm going to click on param so I can see this value. Now let me copy this copy. Now this is fine. This is not needed. So uh, you can see if I paste it here, what is what is the content? This is some gibberish value, right? So this is like encoded, like base 64 encoded or URL encoded. Okay, I don't I don't care. I'll simply go to my decoder and I'm going to paste it here. I'm going to remove everything and I'm going to paste my thing. And here you go. I I found some CSRF token. Okay, so copy this. So this is like the one that we have seen here. You can see N O W O N O W O. Okay, so if we copy that, it will be like decoded in some other format. That's why we are not able to so. So I need to copy this value, and this is like I'm just using it as a notepad. Now uh, the CSRF token that is like when I as a person I am going to request for the email change ID, right? So in that request, I am going to replace my CSRF token with this CSRF token. So Whichever user's CSRF token is this, for him the mail ID is going to change. I hope this is completely making sense. So here I come for the proxy. Intercept is on. Let me ask for, okay, now not. Change mail. Some random, this one. Intercept is on and update email. So you can see here the CSRF token is right. So to solve the lab, they have given us one mail ID. Uh, that mail ID is like to solve the lab this mail ID is what we have to change it to okay so this is the mail ID and then CSRF token is where is it we just copied it right so copy this is this all thing is not required I'm just using them as a notepad okay copied now let me get back to here as of now you can see it is not solved I have like used some other users csrf token and i'm going to intercept this off so it is going to come invalid csrf token what happened let us try it again okay so come back update email one second change email add something else intercept is on update email right so uh, you see we we change the csrf but somehow server is able to identify so what we will do this time is this is our csrf token let me copy that mail again uh, where is it here you go copy and paste so we are not going to like hit it directly we are going to create a csrf poc now okay so this is clear this is the ready-made request that we have created now if i do intercept is off it is going to reflect on the browser which is not working so i am going to click right click and then in the engagement tools you can see something has generate csrf poc so in this i need to make sure that this is so as of now it is auto submit is nowhere there okay so it is like input type equal to submit i have to click and do all the stuff like uh, manually I have to submit right so instead of that I will click on options and then I will click on include auto submit and yeah that's it so regenerate now you can see this is like auto submit it will it will take care okay I will copy this thing okay I should not do it manually I will click on this so HTML is copied now I will go to my exploit server and yeah this is not required intercept is off nothing is required so now in exploit server I am going to remove clear the content 
and paste this content so first thing first i need to click on store okay now i have to deliver exploit to victim okay so it is not solved as of now now it is solved so basically we have created a request to forgery and for this we have created a csrf poc which we have sent it to the exploitation server so i hope the lab make uh, made sense and uh, we are now clear with the csrf token and what what all things we can do with this but of course if there is like for this we didn't have any kind of two factor authentication or those kind of things so we have things for that as well but uh, as of now i i hope this makes sense so don't use it for any unethical purposes use it for only educational purposes and try to uh, no uh, try to add this kind of additional securities when we are trying to develop any full stack website or something or any other application okay so yeah that's it for today and if you like my explanation please do click on subscribe click on notification bell and share with people whom you think okay this knowledge is required or maybe they could help us as a community to grow so if you have some any interesting methods for the csrf please do mention them in comments we'll definitely try to have a hands-on over it so yeah that's it for today thank you stay home stay safe